Hawaii is famed for its lush tropical vegetation and verdant valleys. But the same rainfall that nourishes the land can create severe flooding and runoff. In a search for high-tech solutions, a surprisingly low-tech answer has emerged, vetiver. Vetiver is a clump grass that originated in India. Over the past 20 years, it has been developed under the vetiver system and found to be ideal for soil and water conservation and to have numerous bioengineering applications as well. You know, the extensive uh, root system that uh, is established once this uh, vetiver is matured uh, does a phenomenal job in holding back uh, uh, siltation and obviously uh, anchors itself quite well. This is a typical diversion we normally do to control runoff from our fields, but the problem with diversions you need maintenance. And also the initial costs of having a grader and a bulldozer here is quite expensive. Compared to a very first strip, you know, one person can do it themselves. It's not gonna be very expensive. It's just the planting material and his time. As a developed country, we've relied too often and too much on rigid structures to stabilize areas that really could be organically stabilized using a, a plant such as vetiver. After all, we probably have a good idea what it costs to build a retaining wall with footings that penetrate six feet. This is a plant that has a value of one six mild steel and its roots penetrate 12 to 15 feet down to stabilize areas. The root penetrates vertically. There isn't lateral movement with this plant. At maturity, this plant will be two feet in diameter. If you'll imagine this row of vetiver with an equally dense web of roots interconnected that goes the entire length of this row. It's pretty impressive. And it tells you quite honestly that the soil's not going anywhere, which is exactly what we need in Hawaii. Using vetiver in hedges on the contour of slopes slows the water's velocity as it comes down that slope and it traps topsoil and silt and debris, including garbage, that would otherwise make it past our shoreline and into coastal waters and atop our reefs. Well, this vetiver, this has been established here, is about two and a half years old now. It gets absolutely zero care from us. Uh, as you can see, it's not irrigated. It's just uh, irrigated by whatever uh, runoff that comes out from the roadways and through the water channels where it developed to channel water into this area before it goes into the Waikakalua Gulch. The vetiver obviously holds back a lot of the siltation, which is what we're trying to uh, prevent from entering the gulch here and, and uh, losing it from our arable farming areas. It's very resilient. You can actually cut it to hedge it to a low height. It also can burn and come back, I believe, from the uh, roots. So it's, it's quite a resilient plant, and we're really thrilled to, to have it in, as a tool to use in, in erosion control and water uh, management. In lab studies, they've shown that water in a flume will back up to like a foot or a foot and a half behind a wall of, of vetiver. Like in this case, it shows you that if water's backing up behind this vetiver, it's giving water time to sit and drop out all the sediment here. So rather than having to divert all the water and deal with it downstream, you're infiltrating some, you're having some flow on through. And what you find a lot of times is above a uh, line of vetiver, you'll have deposition occurring, and below it, you'll have uh, no evidence of flow um, because the, uh, the vetiver has dissipated that energy and provided uh, kind of a spreading out of the water. More than 100 countries are using the vetiver system technology and the success of vetiver as a mitigation plant is borne out by the work of Don Miller, who in Vanuatu in 1999 and 2000 took a group of dedicated volunteers into the gullies along the southernmost area of Vanuatu, and they laboriously hand-planted vetiver in the troughs or the gullies leading from high to low, and in a state that had lost its shell fishing, had killed its reefs, within 10 years, the shellfish industry is back and the, the once dead reefs are now thriving. 
it's because the silt is remaining on the ground where it belongs. Perhaps most importantly, the variety of vetiver used in Hawaii, known as sunshine vetiver, is not fertile and therefore not invasive. These have infertile flowers and to date, it's been up to about uh, six years and I haven't seen a single uh, seedling. You dig up a plant and you hand split it. So this is a plant that is labor intensive. You cannot buy vetiver seed and even if it was available, you shouldn't buy it. One could plant using these little side shoots and each of these would be one plant. And actually these will take uh, quite well. They already have roots, but what I still will do is leave it in uh, water for about 10 days and I will change the water daily in that in these roots there is an oil and if you don't change the water daily, the water will actually spoil and it will be really smelly and actually uh, it will ferment and actually kill these plants. I have not tried planting this directly, but I think you can, especially during the winter months. Uh, but winter months are not a good time to plant because if you have a huge uh, rainfall, all of these will just wash down the hill. So it's very important to plant the vetifer after the rains and have it established before the rains come. So if you plant it about uh, eight inches apart, normally it should uh, create a nice tight barrier. The caution would be if you plant it too close, there's a shading effect, then the plants will be very weak. So you want to plant it close enough, but not too close. So as far as we're concerned, I mean, as far as uh, trying to do its job, you can't find a better grass than vetiver. It doesn't require any maintenance. It's tough, it's resilient, and as you can see, it's uh, fairly drought resistance also. These are just a few of the many benefits of vetiver grass and the vetiver system. For more information, please log on to vetiver.org.